And this is gonna be different for everybody because yep. I'm not everybody. Don't be a Mark Sager, don't be a Courtney. I want you to look at this. Look at what I feel is such a success story. You wait right there. Well, nope, don't come down. So guys, what is this? So we live here. And so, you know, we watch young cleaners on the internet and stuff too, and they're, they're trying to discover and do well. When you start to do those things, all of a sudden, protectors started to sell itself. And those winters would just about destroy us. Yeah. We're just putting ourselves in front of better customers. Whatever you do, yeah. do it. Otherwise, I'm spinning just, my wheels. You just said it. You just said so much right yeah. there, Mark. So you tend to see all work as great yeah. if you just give yourself away to the worst possible customers. Mm -hmm. Like they had been schmoozed. Because you're building a relationship yes. with people, not just a business money relationship. Ready to hit the road today? Are you? What do we got out there? Cornfields? <laughs> Russ and Mel Terhar, who I've known for quite a while, and I'm on the tour, and this is gonna be a different video. We're gonna talk about where they started and where they are now, which is gonna be incredible. You've got to see this facility, and they're revitalizing the downtown of Slater, Iowa, this nice little small community. It is awesome. Field of Dreams, the corn isn't as high right now as the movie out there, but it's early in the year, but it's amazing. We're gonna tell the story, where they are now, where they come from, it's incredible. This is Russ and Mel Terhar. Russ T and Melanie. Mel D. Mel D. <laughs> See that unit there? What year is that, Russ? 2002. That looks showroom. I sit here, I have a coffee this morning with the guys, and I just oogle and awe over the presence of this wrap and the details, and it's so darn clean. We just finished doing a job this morning, and the guy owned a couple Porsches in the garage, yep. you know. Yeah. Three. Three. And yeah. your son uh, got to uh, start one and rev it. Yep. Insane. Even I had the chance to be there. But we got back here and he was cleaning the windows again. Yeah. What do you charge for something like that? Can you come up to Grand Rapids, Minnesota? We can, uh, a, <laughs> we can put a price on just about anything. Anything. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I want to show them around this gorgeous facility and the story that you guys have, because you went to buy this at one time and you didn't get it. Yeah. We actually, the first time I came into this building was 2014. I was serving the family that lived here. They had a, I think it was an area rug upstairs that I was cleaning. Mm -hmm. And I came in and the guy was just so passionate about the restoration. They, 
he had bought this building for next to nothing in yeah. this little town and the city got behind him with a big grant and he kind of walked to this to where you see it today. It's I know great. you have a few touches in here like I've seen so you want to talk about branding masters. These two have taken it to another level. He was the 89.99, you know, three room special guy yeah. for a while. Not even close to that now. Your prices are even above Sagers at times and I am more than impressed and so happy about it. <laughs> so this facility in here, how old is the building? Building was built in 1900. So it is 122 years old. Melly, I know you're just busting at the seams and you're like I'm not gonna be part of this much, but you know, I do this to my wife all the time, but I said, you gotta be part of the brand. I'm gonna just show them here briefly. There they are too. And their dog Summer is around here somewhere. And they're dog friendly here as Luna's making herself at home and on the couch. Even down to the, look at the colors on the dartboard. Blue and green. Blue and green is the theme here. Doesn't the windows, the garage doors. You've got a music corner. Do people know that? I mean, I I'm giving know. it away. I sing to my band. He sings to his band. And I play my guitar to the band. Look at this. I, I serenade it. That is wonderful. The van gets serenaded. No wonder it makes so much great money for you guys. We're going to see this place, but... Well, I just wanted to mention before we got here where we were, we had a great home in Huxley, which is about four miles away. And for about seven years, we rented dry storage. Dry storage meaning it did not have running water. But you had to have it because up here it gets cold. Yes, yep. I had to keep everything warm in the winter, so it was a warm place for me to keep right. the truck because I run it every day and didn't want to winterize it every day. Yep. So I needed a warm place to keep it, but it was terribly inconvenient. It was just yeah. hard living to be separated, to have the van and the tools sometimes separated from, from mm -hmm. where we were at the house. And I always seemed to need the thing that was over there. And if I was at the shop, I needed something that was at home and it just, it was not tough. convenient at all. It was all. tough going. We started bursting at the seams. Sure, because you actually raised your prices and all of a sudden you got busier. It did happen, yeah, it did. We got really serious about yeah. about what we do and, and started to get busier. And Mel, she just, she runs this ship incredible. She takes all the work orders, takes all the notes. Russ is doing essentially two jobs a day is all he has to do right now. That's pretty much where we keep it. Yeah, because yeah. he's cleaning high end and yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I was at a place today he had he had four Porsches. He only had three in this garage today. Yeah. There's no video, by the way. This is the reason we're doing this. He cleans too high end and I don't get invasive in people's personal property. They invited us in. So I'm going to be invasive here because they're friends of mine and I'll run back to Minnesota after this. <laughs> Can you show us just in here this great room? You got your pool table here, office in the corner. Yeah, Russ's office is back there. This is just our garage. Tell them what this used to be. Okay, so this used to be when they restored it in 2014, they totally gutted it down to the studs. No, I mean, they... like even originally, I'm talking way back, a hundred years ago. Oh, well, originally, if you're going that far back. They were selling Model T's. Yeah. This was a showroom. Yeah. And they would have a Model T parked in here mm -hmm. and you could come in here and pick out your Model T, fall in love with it or whatever and order it because they would just have one. Sure. One that you look at, you decide, okay, I want that, so we'll order it and, yeah. and wait. And I think that's how it went. And tractors. And tractors for a time. <laughs> tractors first, I think. There's dirt, it was all dirt. We have pictures mm -hmm. of uh, horse and floor. buggies delivering wow. the first Model T's yeah. into this building. And one of your themes that you guys are always talking about, is, what is it, old meets new? Is old your meets theme? new. It's so, pretty much what we stay, try to stay true to brand-wise. Your theme, I mean, again, it's retro, but it's cool and in Midwest flavor. I love small town, I'm from small town and I absolutely adore what's going here. So show me the office, show me around a little bit. Super puppy, you with us? Tour, yeah. Gotta get the dog in there. <laughs> An amazing place. <laughs> Door. This, this is the bar room, yeah. It was gonna be my office, but it doesn't, my kitchen table's my office. I'll just never I get from it. that. It's just very convenient for me. And My wife too. Yeah, and so. And we've been here for two and a half years. We originally built the bar to be a bar slash reception desk. Yeah. It has literally maybe never, not once, or maybe once or twice, been a reception desk where somebody will come in and make a, pick yeah. up an area rug or make a payment or something, but that doesn't happen very often. Tell me about the wood, too. Yeah, so this is original to the building. So this is 122 years old. We just had them re- <laughs> epoxy it and kind of reconfigure it and yeah. we tried to salvage everything that we could. You guys do like Tuesday nights down here on the streets. There's a Park. farmer's market right here. Right here. We're you on Main Street. Brought in bands. They're looking at maybe opening a little coffee shop. 
maybe sell something for the community to come in and yeah. enjoy the space. Everybody really has fond memories, it, it, whether mm. they've been here 50 years ago as yeah. a child, you know, we have lots it's of people It's farming love this Midwest. Place. You're so proud of this building too, and to be owners of it. And yeah. you want to show it off and you want to share with the others, Thrill. which is we so just cool. Think it's great. I mean, it's, it's, it's the cornerstone of this town. We're right in the center of town. Mm -hmm. I walked in, my eyes are still going way ultimate cool. I just can't get over it all, so. It means a lot to hear you say so, that. So, uh, we spent, we enjoyed last night just watching, there's a TV with the, just floating, it, like there, it just popped on a second. We just sat there all night and looked at that <laughs> ASMR TV for us. Decoration, Melanie. Yeah, so I mean, we had, we were kind of the guy that, there was a local guy that, that built our bar for us and he kind of gave us the idea of black ship lap and mm -hmm. just keeping with the industrial feel. It's very, everything's exposed here. So black and brown, can't yep. go wrong with black and brown. It's just kind of one of my favorite combos. And yeah. that is an original, I don't know where it came from, but it's very old. I just acquired it. Yep. So we're gonna repurpose that um, fireplace mantle. It's gonna be It's gonna be different. We're not done in here. This no. is just beginning. No, we're not. We have to finish. Boom. They're never that finished. Direction. We all know that. Yeah. Right. Then you start over again on a different yeah, type right. of remodel. Yeah. Right. You had to probably with the old paint there and stuff, they didn't quite strip that, but that in itself was a story, but it's really cool. Yeah, don't lick it. It's got lead in it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they had to sign a waiver that... Yeah, right. not, they're We not, did actually have to sign a waiver. For Ross that. tried to eat the paint chips right away, but there was no flavor worth it, so... <laughs> this is a garage door that opens up to Main Street. That's great. So it's really easy for us on the weekend yep. or whatever to just, Open you know, up. be part of the community. Enjoy. Yeah. We've always, we've loved hospitality. I mean, that's part of the reason I think carpet cleaning comes mm -hmm. fairly honestly and naturally to me. I've always loved serving people in their homes and making them happy. And we've loved the idea of doing it. Now you bring them here too. Do it right here. Yeah. Yeah. Their branding again, I was just as so on point. I mean, they're on the back there with their van, uh, their pup. Who doesn't like dogs, huh? Right, so uh, kids and pets. Yeah. And, and but, most, of our, most of our customers have those yeah. things. But again, you can, those kids and those dogs, those kids and those dogs, those high dollar dogs, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's why we send them Christmas uh, cards. Sure, <laughs> the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, office isn't much to see at this point. It's a uh, yeah, but who wouldn't want that view? I mean, come on, you get to see the outdoors. The shades are wonderful. They're custom. The people who did the remodel here did all custom shades on it. Another sign. You had yeah, that, that up for on a while. The outside of our dry storage. And yeah. We just, uh, I haven't found the perfect spot for it yet, yep. here. So you can see, he keeps his van in here. He's got his guitars in here so he can sing to his van every night. Thank you for making me money. <laughs> <laughs> They've got this thing set up. Bathrooms, look it. Melanie is on that door. Here's Russ on this door. Full bathrooms, now get this. A guest shower. The I even got there. a urinal for my van. For yeah, he did. Who, Dude, you're over the top. Decorations. Melanie, you, you, you've influenced a lot here. I can just, your touch is everywhere. Hey, here you've got some cabinets, a sink. Russ, you did this top here too? Uh, I finished the top. I put in, I was able to put in the sink and the dishwasher. Dude, and it, it fit. Yeah, right, <laughs> it worked. I didn't have any parts left over. No, no parts left over. No. It's a, it's a work in progress. I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm sure it'll, we did want it to just kind of disappear. We didn't yeah. want it to be a focal point in the, mm. in the room, so. We didn't want it to seem very residential, so we just yep. kind of went plain. We haven't put any hardware on it, and I don't know that we will. I like it. Big old beams going down here with turnbuckles right over here. And that's part of the building structure from 1900. The, the yeah. original. It came from, word has it on the street, that it came from the East Coast, and it was a very cutting edge. The technology did. The technology came from the East Coast when they built this in 1900. Yep. So they brought it in, it was like, a big deal. Yeah. They're still talking about it. Because they wanted to keep it open so yeah. that they could have a showroom in sure. here. And that was hard to do back then. Right. It's got another side room over here and I understand you have guests that stay here at times too, your own yeah. family. Yeah. Uh, you have another garage in the back here like you don't have enough. You have another garage. Have a personal yep. garage. Yep. And a shop. And they, they added a, a, a personal garage in 1955. Yeah. In the last couple of years this has been where I park my van. I just love it. I like, I like looking at it. Yeah, know, and then the lights going. Yeah, and yeah. it's easy for me to, it can be just the worst day outside and mm -hmm. just snowy and cold and rainy yeah. and I can take my time, 
making sure everything's right and when you first started out your small little yeah panther truck mount yeah to then you went up to another level truck mount yep and then you found this butler in new york was it this was in pennsylvania pennsylvania uh, philadelphia yep incredible low hours the guy used it mainly janitorial he yep. ran out there got it came to my house we did a little tinkering on it yep the thing is just dolled up chip garber also part of yes. really dolling it up too Absolutely, yep. you wouldn't know that this isn't a newer van even it performed wonderful today we watched okay. oh yeah dude we got to see the inside it's yep. been to work today already so yeah not, it went to work it's not perfect but it's uh i love it it's not perfect but yet it's clean it's, very it's not workable. perfect <laughs> so darn nice what year again 2002. yeah 20 years old yeah, yeah. and if you just keep plucking away and yeah. making little small improvements because the details are important yeah. you know the yeah. lights he's done the lights the, mm -hmm. the rear just yep. little things just the tires and the wheels the tires and the mm -hmm. wheels. i knew that that's what you did sager i could tell i could see <laughs> years ago i could see the wrap and i was like well what makes that van so special looking yeah. there is something really special about that van and it comes down to a couple of key things sure a really nice looking wrap mm -hmm. full wrap mm -hmm. and the wheels and the tires yeah if you'll go that far mm -hmm. i mean they love it i watched it going through town again i mean i've seen this van before but it's been about four years since i've seen it again mm -hmm. to me it's just stunning again i i'm more blown away by it this time after not seeing it for four years oh, seriously wow. yeah that's yeah, awesome yeah. We try. I love it, and and, yeah. and I think that when you spend a lot of your waking life in the van, you should like yes. your van. Yeah, absolutely. Put a, a Sony Apple CarPlay thing mm -hmm. in the front, and it kind of yep. made it feel modern. Yeah. Again, I guess old. Me you would too. say how many jobs a day were you doing before you went this route where you are now? How many years you been in business? There was. We've been in business in Iowa since 2008, but we moved from Mel's hometown yeah. area to this area about 11 years ago yeah. and I broke my leg so there was a little hiccup there so, so the no motorcycles anymore we've discussed that well, <laughs> not right now I'm not right now still. and in that meantime this is where you've ended up now and you're in your young 40s yeah. so I guess we we're always saying this too is this is possible from sure. where you are to the comfort zone you are it was hard work to get here the next part I'm going to show is the payback is immense <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I just want to say something that I was yeah. saying to Mark a little bit earlier is yeah. sometimes when I was first starting to engage in the industry and started to see some successful guys and gals around me and hearing their stories of success, part of me really rejected it and yeah. thought, oh, this is so frustrating. Why do they get all the breaks? Why does everything go their way? Why has everything got to be so hard for me? Another part of me really believed those people saw the things that were happening believed what they were doing with their pricing and with their their clientele was much better than mine i could tell i was on a i was on the wrong track you uh, were kind of working to go in debt yes yeah. i mean i was i i, I kind of i saw stanley steamer's coupons yep and i knew that stanley steamer was a successful franchise i would still sure say that. i mean clearly right. they're a very successful franchise mm -hmm. but i had to figure out that I'm not Stanley Steamer. Right. So why should I pretend to, if I pretend to be Stanley Steamer for as long as I pretend, I'll never be Stanley Steamer. Right. If a customer wants Stanley Steamer, they can find Stanley Steamer. Mm -hmm. I want a customer that wants me. Yeah. That wants me, that doesn't want Stanley Steamer. They want, they want us. And it's not just me. Yeah. The first, it's a whole team. Yeah, whole partner. it is. I, mm -hmm. I, I say all the time that Mel, Mel lines them up and I knock them down. Yeah. Because she does such a good job on the phone and she answers Absolutely. the phone. On the other end of the line is a good customer that was referred usually mm -hmm. by, a, by a customer that we've had for years. And they're already set up to be a good long-term customer. And you're not advertising anymore, are you? No. <laughs> uh, beyond this, no. And we do send reminder cards. Yeah. So I, sh I should be careful to say we're not... It's not that we're doing nothing, but we haven't spent a dime. Yeah. And I say this with so much pride. Pride. I yeah. Guess. It was a lot of work to get it to the point where yeah. I didn't have to feed mm -hmm. the monster that mm -hmm. is Facebook and Google. Did you you built this business on 
first of all, you did good work, quality work. You yeah. always did even when you were cheaper. I think so, yeah. But you were doing work that should have been priced higher. You sure. really were. Yep. And then also as your skills developed, you got even more confidence, you did even better work. Started vacuuming even. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all of us said, you know, welcome to the club. Yes. When I first started my family, we didn't know that was important. I worked for four companies, Mark, and all, before I started my own, in none of the four companies, including yeah one of the big franchises previously mentioned in the video. Yeah. Uh, none of them did we carry a vacuum on right. the truck. I would feel naked if I left without a vacuum. Yeah. And then that's not the only thing that separates us, but that is such a basic piece, I think, of a... And some places, you know, they have made service supposedly does it. There's even times I still will say, hey, could you allow us just a vacuum? Just for our own comfort, just to double check. Sometimes it takes a minute. They're just, right. It's in our prep letter yeah. that we ask that they we back. give them about seven points to mm -hmm. prepare for their appointment, and one of those points is we ask you to kindly please do the first pass of vacuuming within yeah. 24 hours prior to your appointment. So that sets us up with, and I always say on the phone, we'll also do that, but I, I always stress vacuuming mm -hmm. because it really does make a huge difference. Yeah. Sorry, I know the jury's probably still out on the boards with all the, all the talk about vacuuming, but we feel like it produces an, uh, a very noticeably different product. It does. It makes it easier to clean too. Yeah. Now, not everybody is in that position they're pricing whatever they can. Sure. Totally understand. There's different methods of doing it. You've now reached the degree though, you can and you do. And we are the same point. Yeah. We can take the time and, to do it. Yeah. yeah. And what we do, it's not magic. I don't have the budget to try to convince our yeah. customers that we have magic water mm -hmm. or anything magic. It's not magic. It's not magic at all. We yeah. we tend to the principles over and over and over and, and consistently. So they know when they call you, they know what to expect. They do. Yeah. There's gonna be there's gonna be the full the full service. I mean we're not afraid to scrub the carpet. There was years mm -hmm. we went by I didn't even have a tool to scrub. I thought none of us knew about it. Maybe a rake. You know, that's it. Yeah. Maybe. Brush, go Maybe, you sure. bring the right. shop brush from the floor and we're gonna use it on the carpet right. too to agitate. Right. You know, or you're gonna sweep off the carpet first before you know yeah. you start trying to clean. Oh yeah, yeah. dude, I've been there. And all of a sudden it seemed like, Mark, maybe you've experienced this, when you start to do those things, all of a sudden Protector started to sell itself. Yeah. Because we actually were just putting ourselves in front of better customers that really yep. just wanted the full meal deal. You yep. know, it's like whatever, whatever you do, yeah. do it and charge me what you need to charge me. Yeah. That, that was kind of the yep. mentality of the customers that we started to attract. Here's the mascot. Guess what? My mascot's up at the top of the stairs, can't get down. <laughs> so I better go rescue her a second. But <laughs> <laughs> you wait right there. Well, nope, don't come down. So, nope, we're going up. Well, anyway, <laughs> Melanie, I'll let you lead here. Okay. I'm sorry, but we're just keeping her from coming down the stairs. Little Miss Super Puppy will probably try to jump. But this here now is something very, very unique. I take a little longer, guys. It's just that darn knee is breaking in yet. It's still, oh. still under warranty. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, what is this? So we live here. We live upstairs. <laughs> this is our house. I got to just zoom in up to here. Yeah. Look at, do you guys know how high the ceilings are? Yeah, so it's 17 feet in the front, and it has a very slight incline down to 14 in the back. Oh, my gosh. Oh, back there, there's a deck overlooking our backyard and Story Street. <laughs> and a hot tub. <laughs> and a hot tub. Hot tub. Hot tub. They had to get a big there. cherry picker lifted up and bring yeah. up. Up there, there's another loft up above room. That's yeah. Max's hideout oh, where Max's, he. Their son, Max. Goes up and watches. Max went out cleaning with us today, stuff. too, and he did very, very well, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. He did awesome. Oh, yeah, you got to take us this way. So this, this is the kitchen, our front door, which is on the side. But yep. We have a little patio out there. She's fine. What are you doing? You're interrupting the video. <laughs> so anyway, back to this valley. Yeah. So this, this is the outside door. This is the outside door. Yeah, we have a, a, a separate entrance so you don't have to come up through our business. Well, so, you know, you can come out here and like where you think, we're coming to visit. Hey, you, you, right you get back up here. Yo, in. We do our grilling right out there and this is the cabinets i think this is ash wood if i remember it's we've just, been told yeah, that, I, I don't know we've been told it's cherry but who knows it could I be don't know. i haven't really it's noticed gorgeous that. gas stove yeah. oven big old sink here so melanie says don't mind we're busy here taking work orders business plus they're yeah, entertaining this me is, this is my office this is the yeah. actual office so you know if you give me a call i'll probably catch so here. nice custom shades yeah. Just super huge loft area. Fireplace here. Yep. Intense. 
look at that i still can't believe all the detail in here again some of the new design that those days of how to put the building together yeah. the clay tile kind of brick work yeah so these boards were also original they just repurposed every single thing that they could i'm so glad they did yeah it's gorgeous these uh ceiling fans up here are intense they're great you can feel it just kind of hit you but yeah. comfortably yeah it helps because this old building is it's an old building yeah, yeah. and it, it helps to move the air Some, when we open the windows even it can be like 80 degrees sometimes and mm -hmm. as long as we open all these windows and get the air yeah. moving it yeah. helps it helps well and you've got a view right downtown here you can yep. see down all the streets yep. you've got your own uh you've got your own yard light here yeah, yeah. And, they play, and they play music right there too so oh yeah i see you got your own speaker, <laughs> speaker. do you put in requests i should <laughs> call city hall and we have had the request that they don't play it past midnight <laughs> and they turn it down a yeah. little bit oh that's nice of them so yeah. there are some benefits and disadvantages they've been very nice oh that's great great lighting fun <laughs> just the whole thing so this is your office now this is my office yep i usually yep. camp it right there and i answer you know uh this place. Several calls in the morning. It's Mondays just, are busy. If it's sunny, I know it's going to be a busy day. Yeah, true. Today was pretty busy. Remember, Russ, you're going to be busy. Yeah. You no know, getting any time off. She keeps me moving. You know, I know your living quarters and bedrooms and bathrooms are all over there. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think we need to go in there, but you get the idea. It's like this everywhere in the place. <laughs> just absolutely stunning. Lots of character. Yeah, definitely. And you got to almost drive a Porsche today. <laughs> Your dad's in there working like crazy and him and I are out hanging in the shop with a guy who has like four Porsches, three of them were there and uh, raced before. It was fun. You got to start it and rev it. He says, give her the gun. I didn't take my camera out to take a picture, but he was, even the guy says his eyeballs are this big. I'm like, uh, yeah, so are mine. <laughs> loves cars. Yeah. One thing that my wife is going to be super jealous of is that you can keep your countertops clean and looking clean, but it does hide some things. At our house, it's hide a lot. But look at here, there's all the appliances, plugins for everything underneath there, a pantry on the other side adjoining with sinks and stuff too, right through. And so what do you do? You just take and just you see it. nothing. Yeah. It's perfect countertops That's every right. day. Yeah. That's right. Cool. <laughs> Russ, the, I met you, I met you the first time, I think it was about 2014-ish at a Mikey's Fest in Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz Aptos, California. A lot of veteran cleaners there. Yes. At that time, they put you in a position to speak in front of all these veteran cleaners. Yeah. Awkward. It was. Awkward. I was nervous. I don't, yeah. I don't normally, uh, I don't see that as my strength usually. It was hard. At that time, what were you doing for your cleaning and what did you take away probably from that event? Did you do some changes when you got home? I did and I had already been kind of engaged in the process of transforming our business a bit yeah. because I was, I start, I broke my leg and that's when I broke my leg, I really started to be active for about three months. I jumped on the board and mm -hmm. I really, uh, I started to ask questions. I thought, you know what? I don't even know these guys. Who cares if they laugh at me? I'm just gonna ask the questions. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and engage with this community, even though I was, yeah, I was very intimidated. Mm -hmm. And then to go out there and put faces to yeah. you. I had talked to you on the phone, I think, before I went out there, so. But it was hard, yeah, it was really hard. And How'd I you was, get my unlisted phone number? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody calls me. Who gave you my number? Who gave you my number? Melanie, did you notice any difference when you got back from there? Yeah, yeah, but that was a pretty monumental time in our life too because we were going, we had just gone, well, we hadn't just gone full time. We were about to go full time. Okay. Because Russ was, had a part, well, no, you had a full time. I was full time, time at the community college in Des Moines. Oh, wow. Yeah. Doing, doing third shift. Uh, I was the lead custodian yep. at doing third shift custodial work yeah. at the community college. Wow. Yeah. And I did that for three years and it reached a point where it was, the business was slowly growing a little bit and mm -hmm. I was really pressed from every side and it just felt like something's got to give because I can't, I can only just do, I just can't keep up. I felt like I was drowning. I had too much going on and everything was suffering and Max was, I mean, little, little. Yeah, like one or two. Yeah. And we just, yeah, we felt like we weren't doing anything well and we just had to commit. So it was a big, scary time that we decided just to take the leap of faith and you put in your resignation after, you know, I don't know how long after Mikey's Fest, but every time 
either he comes home from an event like that or we because we've been together we're always so pumped yeah. it's just it creates great synergy it just gives us such good ideas and just to be around people that are passionate about mm -hmm. the same thing as we are you yeah. know it, it does so much for mm -hmm. just the vision and just continuing to to move forward in seeing that come to its fullest i see this building as was kind of a goal you know you had visions of owning something mm -hmm. being part of something that i don't think this particular building was exactly at the time when you first started out what you're going for no we had no idea no but here it is and you're doing it the company your carpet cleaning business has got you to something that you really enjoy mm -hmm. living is more comfortable it's not always perfect nothing is we know that but it sure feels good to have reached this point after doing more than one job mm -hmm. Trying to make a living, make things go. And here you are now, two jobs a day. Yeah. Dude, I need to take lessons from them. Even my wife says, would you talk to them and what they're doing? <laughs> Melanie's supposed to tell me, do less work. You know, we, we, we get pretty engrossed, pretty swamped up there and we don't have enough help. And, and we charge a decent rate price. He's beating my butt on prices right now. <laughs> Dude, that is like the most insane, awesome thing. I mean, I really love hearing that. Uh, now I need to take lessons. So what would you have for any young cleaners? What would you say? I think the probably the biggest there's a lot to this But mm -hmm. the biggest thing that I always go back to is that you have to figure out who you are Who are you and, mm -hmm. and what do you want? Yeah, and those are such hard. I mean it sounds simple enough But realistically you have to figure out what sort of business do you want? Because there's lots of ways. We live very close to Ames. It's a, it's a big college town near mm -hmm. us. And, and it's fairly transient. There's a lot of college students moving. And you can very much indulge in that sort of work. There's, there's that work to be done. Yeah. Um, but, but when you present yourself to that customer, the transient college student is really after a receipt. A carpet cleaning receipt to prove to their landlord that they cleaned it mm -hmm. so usually that customer is choosing their carpet cleaner based on 89.99 on well one <laughs> one thing is the price is number one and availability you've got to be yeah. able to do it and and do it at a cheap price we're small and i right. like it this way part of understanding who you are mm -hmm. and this is going to be different for everybody because mm -hmm. yep. i'm not everybody don't what be a it? mark sager don't be a courtney be yourself because seriously <laughs> that's true it is yeah, true that's true you've got to figure out what who are you what do you bring to right. the table emulate yeah. look at them and glean off at some things that you want from that individual you're maybe following but don't be exactly them because it's your identification yes. that also brings you the clients that come to you and you're most comfortable with yes now play it, to your strengths yes right play yep. to your own strengths don't mm -hmm. don't don't be spin false spin your wheels and try to spend a lot of money doing we were doing a lot of print ads following Stanley Steamer's, uh, yeah. basically their whole marketing idea. They, they put out a lot of print coupons. They mm -hmm. do radio and TV and expensive things. Yeah. And for me to try to square off with a franchise like that, a juggernaut like yeah. Stanley Steamer was goofy. I don't know what ever gave me that idea that I should do that. Yeah. Um, but what getting engaged and the boards and and going to the events and stuff it helped me get around guys like you and have mm -hmm. some frank conversations and i and i and i'm thankful for those times because yeah. you know there was you've had me up to your house mm -hmm. a couple of times Mark. yep and you're welcome to come again too with, without, <laughs> i can't believe it he's taking me next time okay <laughs> we're gonna have a lot of fun now <laughs> yeah so you kind of figure out along the way you sort of I started to figure out who we were and what I wanted because I see there was a lot of yeah. companies that were out there doing well and they weren't Stanley Steamer yep some of this though too comes with I'm more I'm not gonna say mature older let's say so I've matured seasoned seasoned there we go seasoned spicy <laughs> <laughs> old bay <laughs> but, uh, so you do as you get older you start understanding mm -hmm. your experiences make it so as we're aging and i want to say getting smarter we start knowing what our visions are and what what our goals are what we want mm -hmm. that's hard somebody says what is your five-year goal i i still couldn't tell you what my next five years are entirely no i don't think you can but you have long range goals short range goals and 
they just something will fall into place at this and then you take the next why in life and go from there mm -hmm. so did you ever find that you kind of along the way you started to value your own time more and, and started to understand that you couldn't you couldn't give yourself away every I day. I struggle with that yet. I'll be honest. I, yeah. My wife will tell you too. It's one of my struggles. Yeah. So, did you struggle to get here? Yeah, I still I still struggle with time. I try to play superhero. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's again, it's a family thing. My dad did a lot, and I think it's DNA. I, you're not going to get rid of it. You just need to learn how to deal with it, control it, make yourself better, understand. The times that you're leaving your family behind doing stuff so yeah it's a difficult thing i don't know how you change that i'm 61 maybe by 81 i'll have it figured out a little bit more because mm -hmm. somebody's behind there pushing me on a wheelchair over a cliff but <laughs> <laughs> honey don't do it today give me a couple of years so but yes we had to basically consider who we were what we wanted to be doing because you will always spend so much energy mm -hmm if you're trying to fit into a position that doesn't really work for you. And you're not comfortable in that skin. No, and I mean, and, and that's not to say that you shouldn't push yourself right. outside of your comfort zone because there's gonna be lots of times, yeah. if you're gonna be successful, you will have to do that. You will mm -hmm. have to at times. But that also doesn't mean you have to become some something that's totally unnatural yeah. to you. And, and I learned that I like to read on the boards. I used to love mm -hmm. to read the endless, you know, about the, the processes. And I'm very, mm -hmm. I, I would think about a lot of the process. And I'm, you know, <laughs> I like the information, you know? Right. I, and uh, so. It's the clean machine. It's oh. the clean machine. <laughs> See, there's not a Mark Sager video without a phone call. <laughs> we can. Now you are. They were busy taking calls. <laughs> They're busy here at the clean machine. But it's great. Seriously, both our lines were just going. That's fantastic. But we were just talking about if you were to start a, a carpet cleaning business or you know any business. I think you know it's there's seasons and there's always those early seasons that are that are hard and are um, full of investing back into your business and of sacrifice. There is a a, a part of paying into you know kind of your your Investment. doing your due diligence and yeah mm -hmm. you're a, a season of investing and to, but to not get discouraged and to quit yeah so consistency through feelings and maybe of discouragement and hard times because i think we all go through those winter times are hard around here too yeah, yeah. we'll lose business up there it'll be slow yeah and we look at is that a, a bad thing no for me i go south <laughs> so that's yeah. but the guys stay back and we will stay busy enough just to keep things moving you're not making money all the time you're kind of just hoping to tread above so right now in the busy time we're hustling to build that old squirrel's nest for the winter time yes, yes very much so. uh same thing here it's still even if you know their investment in this building what they have just also means there's you know payments to be made heating mm -hmm. cooling insurances so we are not at a point where we're living day to day now well we live day to day in other ways but we're not living day to day on the means of making my payments yeah. we're trying to think ahead you know they say about having a an investment fund or enough funding so you can make it three months and that's not possible for everyone and uh -huh. price of fuel right now as we're doing this video is high but we make sure we have money set aside mm -hmm. but remember back when we first started out as young couples or whatever that wasn't possible right and, and those were maybe the hardest time, were those yeah. first few winters, especially mm -hmm. up in up in these colder climates. Yeah. And still, to the, after all these years, um, winters half speed, I always say, we, we run about half speed in the yeah. winter. Yeah. And those winters would just about destroy us. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. had nothing coming out of winter. We would be just, couldn't wait for the phone to start ringing. And over the years, we have learned to do just like you said, be prepared, squirrel mm -hmm. away a little bit, get ready yep. because the slowness, it does come. It's just gonna come, even if you're the greatest at yeah. all of the things carpet cleaning. Nobody does you, not ever when go When it's 20 that. below, yeah. people are like, mm -hmm. carpet cleaning mm -hmm. around here? So. You know, I gotta tell you the craziest thing this year for us, I don't know why, but it was 21, 30 below zero. We were getting calls this year, which mm -hmm. that doesn't happen. So. I don't know why, but we can't tell. You can't always predict when the business is going to be there and come there. So that's one of our things. We get in a panic and we're like, we got to take every job. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, no, I got to take every quality job. 
yeah, yeah. that I can because otherwise I'm spinning just, my wheels. You just said it. You just said so much right yeah. there, Mark, uh, because it's in those times. It's in those lean times, mm -hmm. in those growing times, the beginning mm -hmm. times where you don't have a lot of money, you don't have a lot of resources. So you tend to see all work as great yeah. and you just give yourself away to the worst possible customers mm -hmm. and they breed after themselves. Mm -hmm. And then here comes your schedule filled with people that just want a great deal and yeah. they'll never call you unless you can always be the cheapest. Unless you got $89.99 for uh, three rooms. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> call Russ. <laughs> so it's, it's really hard. Yes, there was a time and I would have done a backflip yeah. for you. you I know? get it. And so, um, you know, we watch young cleaners on the internet and stuff too, and they're, they're trying to discover and do well, mm -hmm. and they're going to go through some of it. Mm -hmm. But I guess what we're trying to say is, as you mature in age, uh, try to set goals beyond that. You know, room special guys, you got to take a look at your value. You're worth more than probably some of you are charging. Mm -hmm. and, and be yeah. careful ever offering something. Yeah. If you're just going to, if, if you're offering something at $89 just to get your foot in the door, mm -hmm. customers may let you get away with that kind of thing. Um, you know, the, the heavy sales end of yeah. things, you know, just to make, because you're not going to be profitable with that kind of, that kind no. of pricing. You got to upsell. But we know that that's what those customers are doing. Those mm -hmm. companies are doing. The larger franchises, they can, they do that. It's a whole system that they get you in the door mm -hmm. and then they train you as a salesperson. Yes. I didn't want to do that with my company. I didn't want I didn't want my customers to feel mm -hmm. like they had been schmoozed because you're building a relationship yes. with people, not just a business money relationship, mm -hmm. one that might be only a one time in the door in their house. Mm -hmm. If we can say anything for young cleaners going out here, I want you to look at this. Look at what I feel is such a success story. I think they've lived it. And they didn't know that I've seen it. I've watched it for the longest time. And I gotta tell you, I am so incredibly proud to say that I watched them do this. I am, and I wanna say a huge congratulations because guys, your people that are now, they're gonna come looking at you and how did you get here? I hope they do because yeah. honestly, it is guys like you, Mark. Well, I wouldn't, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for mm -hmm. guys like you. I've been chasing you for 10 years, trying, seeing all these things. And, and, the, I'm, and the, I'm fat and slow, Russ. The, the, the level of, <laughs> you of, must have uh, a broken leg. <laughs> the level of service that Mark was offering, it was mm -hmm. plain to me. I could see his van looked better. And I could see the, he was showing all these pictures about the different branding and the colors and the, all the everything matched, the corner guards and the everything. And I was so absolutely and truthfully impressed by well, thank your work. You. I wanted to do that. Yeah. I saw that and I thought, that's not what Stanley Steamer is doing. I really like this guy. I didn't know what branding was, by the way. Yeah. I looked at it as I came as a band director and it had to be uniform. To me, yeah. it had to be uniform. It makes sense as a band director, marching band and that. Somebody came up and says, I really like your brand. I'm like, what's he talking about? <laughs> I just to be it's honest. consistent. It's, it's consistent. consistent. So it was uniformity and yeah. the brand is what they make. And so it's portraying to the community what we portray, our looks, our colors. Mm -hmm. And you have to develop something crisp and clean because mm -hmm. we are cleaning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to keep your vans crisp and clean. I'm yeah. sorry to say it. And sometimes mine, we get like, you're, you're cleaning in mud fields. You come out in your van, your hoses, everything is a disaster. And you just want to get back to the shop to clean it. Yeah. It's difficult. So not everybody can do that. I totally get it. But and clean find what works too. Yeah. Like um, the van is clean at the moment, but a lot of days, like you said, you get yeah. to the end of the day, stuff kind of got thrown in there. Yeah. I'm a morning person. So I tend to leave Us it too. even overnight yeah. and I'll deal with it in the morning. I yes. just, I, I, I feel more fresh when I'm drinking yeah. my coffee. Mm -hmm. I'll even vacuum it out at that time. I just yep. like to get up in the morning. I get my thoughts together. That doesn't work for everybody. So right. I'm not saying that that's what everybody should do, but yeah. find a rhythm that truthfully works. If, if you're in a rhythm where it's mm -hmm. just always a mess and, and there's something that needs, there may be several things that need to be corrected. You, yeah. The good customers are going to see that. I they're, had a they're lady. Love it. I had a lady once walk out to our van and her, her son did high end construction in Chicago. She walked out to my van, took a look at it. By luck, I wasn't in the mud pit mess the job before. She walked to my van, she goes, this looks really great. You're gonna do just fine in my house. She went in, showed me what she wanted done, says, I'll be in the basement, just let us know when you're done, so we'll write a check. Mm -hmm. Just because of the comfort, because I emulated like her son being a high-end builder in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful the van was clean. And it's, I, I've never forgotten that. 
so mm -hmm. yeah i don't i don't tend to appreciate i don't love when customers will you know i don't yeah. want them to come nosing through but the reality is the best customers notice the little thing they mm -hmm. do they are sort of detail oriented you must become detail oriented i think yeah. any anybody who's going to be successful in the cleaning but not just you have to be detailed you have to understand your numbers even i'm talking mm -hmm. about all of the you have to pay attention to the details if you are yeah. sloppy if you're just gen generally sloppy then i think it's going to be a tough go it is and i, and I don't know that it, that it would be maybe the best you have to be sort of orderly i think and you have to be methodical you have to find a system that works and yep. work that system over and over and over again and consistency is there consistency consistency is there and if you just bring that same because our customer heard about us from their neighbor mm -hmm. and their neighbor told them a story about what we did in their home and if we're doing the same thing over and over and we're yeah. just reaffirming mm -hmm. we're even solidifying people are hesitant to to suggest a service company but we help solidify even their friendship and, and we, we create these cheerleaders when all of a sudden it's not just this one lady who, who loves us, but it's this lady and now her friend and they can't be quiet about and us. And they went on, to Bridge Club. And they're on, that's it. <laughs> or they're on these Facebook chat groups that I, yeah. don't, I don't ever see them. No. I don't ever even see, but I hear from them because we ask every customer. Mm -hmm. Mel asks uh, at the time that they're scheduling and I also ask when I'm, just doing the walkthrough, I yeah. usually say, how did you hear about us? And it, because we don't spend money on mm -hmm. Facebook or Google, one of two ways it is a direct referral or they did their due diligence and they found us usually on Google sure. just by hunting, researching, but it's not, it's not sponsored anymore. It's been yeah. years since we have thrown a nickel at, at those sponsored ads. Um, these companies are, they just read the reviews. So you, you invested yeah. in the beginning, advertising in the beginning, but then as you got busier and larger and more, you know, uh, I guess known, you backed off your advertising budget. Sure. And you don't have to advertise as much. Back you do a few way things. off. Yeah. The van looks really good. It's humming yeah. in, in a nice neighborhood. Yep. That was the other thing, Mark, that I forgot yeah. to mention earlier was um, when I, back when I was cleaning apartments and mm -hmm. I cleaned a lot of empty apartments. Uh, even for property managers, mm -hmm. uh, we had a very large account that when mm -hmm. we left that account, that was monumental. I was terrified. Yeah. I remember that. We were giving ourselves away and I was, I was spent mm -hmm. and it was terrible and I couldn't keep doing that. Um, so I was scared. Uh, you know, when we, but you were parked in an empty. That's it. You were parked yes. in, a, in a unit that wasn't. Nobody occupied. even saw me. We we, <laughs> we we spent all this money on a wrap sure. and nice wheels and everything. And you're cleaning. And nobody's you're there. Clean, you're like a ghost. Yeah. Nobody's even. They don't. They're not even the ones who are paying. They the don't even know. Neighbors aren't even home because nobody's daytime. around. It's daytime <laughs> and, and it's the apartment, so everybody's at work. Yeah. And it just made. It just was bizarre. Now. Yeah. We set up one to two jobs a day. Mm-hmm. For years, it's been this way, hmm. and there is so much power in a van that is well put together, that's clean, mm -hmm. that's in the right neighborhood, that's just humming along, mm -hmm. and how many Mrs. Joneses walk by that van walking their dog as you're, and they all look. Yeah. Some of them ask for cards. Mm -hmm. um, I should be doing the five around type stuff, but I've not even really had to do that. We're, we're small enough that I don't, I don't ever feel the pressure to like, oh, you gotta, you gotta really get that schedule. The schedule's been, yeah, full. we've been kind of operating at capacity for some we time. We are right now jamming at home, and we are booked into the middle of July, and this is what middle of June right now. We're booked out almost a month, which is worrisome because people won't wait typically that long. These people, when you build that, they know to wait. They'll also know to call in advance of that particular day, and we also try to keep a few areas to be open. For accidental things you know that happened in a home not saying we can get to them all even that day yeah. but i think it's important that you build your schedules for yourselves oh yeah she does so yeah. good mel does awesome with that and i if, if i know yeah. that you need a day off i just slide it in there and i don't have to tell them what we're doing mm -hmm. we're just not available until this day that's and, a great point know, we're not available. We're just not yeah. available until this day. Yeah, and don't tell us, sir. You don't have to. No. That's it. No. That's it. Yep. We're just not available that we, day. Sorry, Imagine we can't that. make it. You could just say mm -hmm. that. And, and you know or, what? A good customer is going to hear that. Or our soonest available appointment yeah. is this day. Will and that I work? Can, yeah, will that work? <laughs> and, and, you know, 
a lot of times, you know, if you're going two weeks out, some people think, wow, these guys are really busy. And that mm -hmm. is a credit to right. people want us. We're on demand. And so mm -hmm. that can be a good thing. Yeah. Some I, places I was just at down south, they week to week for them is a good. Uh -huh. But some people down there, there's so many cleaners. Yes. And I'll hear this. People will say, well, that's not realistically marked down here. My area, they'll just go down the line until they get the next one. But more successful as you build your business, you will get the clientele like we have. Mm -hmm. They'll wait. And you're not cleaning for the, I need it today yeah. or I need it this week. Yeah. Because those are the same customers. The, I need it today. I need it when I need it yeah. right now. I need you to jump right this second. Yeah. Are the same customers who won't vacuum when you show up. <laughs> their carpet is filthy. Their carpet is inexpensive and not quality. Yeah. Their furniture is the same way. I'm generalizing. Right. But we have found that as we have paid attention to what we do, and and you just you put yourself in the homes of customers that have big homes full of nice carpet. You're These taking customers your time. vacuumed or their cleaning lady did. Mm -hmm. They've got the car out of the way, so you've got plenty of room. Yeah. There's not shoes everywhere. They don't abuse their things. Do the bedroom area. Where's the carpet? Yeah. <laughs> it's loaded. <laughs> Bring a shovel and a rake, Aaron. <laughs> right, right. I don't miss that. No. There's so much of that in, in our Well, we've done it. Past. So we're saying we've done it. We've yeah. been there. Oh, yeah. So again, matured to a level, we're not and, doing it as often. And, and you should see that if that yeah. is your client base, if you find yourself mm -hmm. daily going into homes where you feel like maybe, maybe yep. they don't even value your time. You know, if you're showing up and they've got shoes laying all over the place mm -hmm. and they haven't vacuumed and you have to ask them to move your car, yeah. how bad do you think they were looking forward to you coming? Yeah, they probably forgot. <laughs> they could, that's the same type of customer. They forgot. Yeah. Well, I and we that. still have a few of that every now and then on our books. And uh, we do make some notes about, you know, what to expect maybe at a home. Mm -hmm. You know, there's certain things. We and there's to challenges, do. too. Yeah, there's like challenges. To help with challenges. There's yeah. older folks that maybe yes. have a hard time vacuuming or moving anything. And, and we, in we that, understand that. In that case, we will we will take care of them. We, we want to, we understand why they're hiring us. That was a buzz in the air. But we understand, <laughs> and we understand that we uh, we feel a responsibility to help an uh, elderly situation, too. So, yeah. Yeah. I want to thank you guys for allowing me to come visit again. And yeah. being so hospitable, and you, they're always so kind to the puppy here too, and and you know, dog people are good people. I want to say, cat people, you're good too. <laughs> if you've got a mountain lion or something out there, I don't know. I, I trust me. There's I, mountain lions on the bike trail out here. This Mark. town is incredible, by the way. Yeah. Bike trails everywhere going through. I'm, we're coming here sometime to enjoy them. We'll bring you along, but. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring some power, some speed. Come to, come <laughs> to the Fourth of July. We always throw down for the Fourth yeah. of July. Slater, Huge. Iowa. Little tiny Slater swells at the Fourth of July. Thousands. We have like twenty thousand people that come here. Yeah. Bernie Sanders was uh, uh, on Main Street a couple. Did he bring his mittens? <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, it's, yeah. A, it's, yeah. it's a neat little, neat yeah. little American town. And Greater we just, Slater. We feel fortunate. Greater Slater. Mm -hmm. So. Well, everyone, again, I sure thank you. And, you know, if you're long here and I don't know how this interview is going to edit out whatever, but um, the growth to watch where they are. I almost feel like sometimes like that moment where as a person in the industry, when you see people grow like this, I'm thankful for the industry mm -hmm. and uh, thankful for meeting people such as you because you're also the future that's going to make things greater too. Yeah, mm -hmm. we need that. So thank you for saying that. Beautiful building. Congratulations. Thank you. So happy for you. Thank you. And I can't wait to bring Sherry here too to see it. Yes. Thank you. When yes. we moved in and you know the people that have played such a role in, yeah. in our growth, I I couldn't wait to show you. Oh. Yeah. I wanted you to see it. You were first on my list. Unfortunately, awesome. you weren't first to make it to, but yep. I was not missing them no matter what this yeah. trip. Also. You're always welcome here. Thanks, yeah. man. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so very much, Melanie. You just Keep running that ship. I will. Yeah, you know when you need when you need some help, don't call me. <laughs> You're in my phone now. Yeah, I'm in my phone. That's right, we are. Oh no. <laughs> Hi everybody, we're signing off. Thanks. Check out the channel if you would. Give a thumbs up, a like, and uh, check out their website, which is the Great Clean Machine at. Oh, no, it's thegreatcleanmachine.com. <laughs> Thegreatcleanmachine.com. Yeah. I'll put a little link down yeah. there and down below, too. But I'm hopefully I can make this video fun and, you know, educational for new cleaners. 
Maybe also for those of you that aren't cleaners, see some of the things we go through as we develop our, our businesses. Take care, everybody. And Luna. Uh, Thank you. Are you awake? That's great. <laughs>